Hello friends and welcome back to Dayton Dies. I am not dead quite yet and neither are you apparently, which is something that we should both be grateful for. Today we are diving back into some weird things on the road. My god, we are clicking through this series super fast. We're already on part 33 out of, I believe it's 40. So yes, we are Almost done. The compilation for this is going to be absolutely beautiful. Even longer than the seven hour amusement part saga. And I am so excited to get that together. So let's push on through for the next few days. And uh, we'll jump into this story and see what it is that we've got today. We've seen some weird things on the road. Part 33. Written by user Roseblack2222. Narrated by Brandon Dayton. If someone were to ask me which chore I hate the most, I would, without hesitation, say doing the dishes. It is so fucking tedious. The other night, they took me altogether two hours, even though I let them soak. Bottom line, never cook eggs in a skillet that isn't non-stick. We really need to get a new scrubber, because the one we got ain't cutting it the least bit. Now that I got all that off my chest, I guess I'll just continue where I left off in the last post. I convinced them to bring me, Carl, and Nick together. The two of them were informed of what I had said. I'm not sure if they knew what it was that I was trying to do, however, they both trusted me enough to just go along with it. We were put in an interrogation room, in which we were cuffed to our chairs. So, what did they do to you guys? I asked. Carl answered that they'd put him in some kind of sensory deprivation machine for several hours. That sounded horrifying. Imagine being aware, but unable to feel anything. That would be enough to drive any normal person crazy. But the fact is, he isn't normal, and that's one of the reasons that I like Carl. Holy shit, Nick said. Are you alright after all that? Don't worry, I've specialized in some torture tolerance techniques. And while being in there was unpleasant, it'll take more than that to break me. Now, what'd they do to you, Nick? Nick told us that he spent the morning in a maze, getting chased by giant man-eating worms. It was like they were watching a game. I'm glad I made it out, but people down there with me, they weren't so lucky. I'll be honest, I was close to cracking before they came to get me. Well, we're happy that you didn't, I told him. Not to mention the fact that now we're all safe. Me too. By the way, what'd they do to you? Oh, they threatened to feed me to this, like, giant anglerfish sea serpent thing. Honestly, it got way too close. Sounds rough. Then Blue entered the room. That's enough small talk. I should inform you three that unicorns have also been sighted by our staff. However, we haven't had as much interaction with them as you claim to have had. The only thing of them we've managed to get is some fur. That was exactly what we needed. Did you lose any people to them? I asked. Oh yeah, those things are vicious, but I'm confident we'll be able to handle one with ease here. At the mention of the word one, I could have sworn a flare of realization in Carl and Nick's eyes. The former spoke up. Well then, it's a good thing you got some of their fur, since that is the key to accessing their world. Oh, and how exactly is that done? gather some supplies and we'll show you. He explained how he came across the ritual, and even though the old woman was dead, the items needed for it might still be among her belongings. Well, since this could end up being very useful to us, I'm gonna give you the order to track her things down. You mentioned the town she was in, but would you happen to recall her exact address? Carl did, in fact. We were sent back to our rooms, and it took them a couple of weeks to locate and retrieve her things from storage. After confirming that they had what would be needed, we were taken to some sort of outdoor greenhouse. It was so big that they were growing trees in it. Hell, you could practically call it a mini forest. Carl and I proceeded to do the ritual, just like we did the last time. I feel as though I should explain what exactly I was planning at this point. Now, admittedly, I was extremely nervous to execute it, since it would put all of us at risk as well. Sometimes, you gotta take that gamble, though. Anyway, I was hoping that my theory would be correct. Said theory depended on our world and the unicorns being in sync with each other. What I mean by that is, you could end up in a different part of their world depending on where you do the ritual here. Things actually ended up going too well, like... 
way too well. Once we finished, the path appeared, just like it did the last time. I'll be damned, Blue said. It actually worked. What now? You can either send some people in, or wait to see if one comes out, Carl answered. I think we'll wait. A minute or so passed, and we could hear the galloping of several sets of hooves. I thought this was so far so good. My plan was for about five or so unicorns to show up, cause some chaos, which we could take advantage of. That changed when other noises made themselves known. My heart dropped into my stomach when I recognized them as coming from harpies. Carl yelled at me and Nick to get back. Then, before Blue knew what was happening, a flock of harpies came out of the path, along with an entire fucking stampede of unicorns. All hell broke loose at this point, in a gore-filled bloodbath. Right off the bat, the harpies decapitated the nearest guards. The poor bastards didn't even get the chance to defend themselves. Next, a group of unicorns came stampeding out. Although some of them were gunned down, they did manage to impale or stomp most of their attackers to death. By this point, we were just trying to get the fuck out of there. Then we heard a voice that chilled my spine. You, he said, his voice full of hatred. Carl and I recognized him as one of the unicorns who had found us. A lifeless body was currently on his horn and dripping with blood, he tossed it aside and turned his attention to us. Oh, shit, I murmured. You betrayed their majesties. Uh, yeah. About that? And then we fucking booked it, trying desperately to escape him. His thundering hooves were right behind us. Our castle fell because of you two, he roared, attempting to impale us with his horn. We split up, trying to divert his attention, and he chose to chase me. Of course. I tried losing him behind some trees, but he just knocked the fucking things down. One of them nearly fell on top of me. I was beginning to get a stitch in my side, so I needed Carl and Nick to do something. And fast. I ended up getting cornered, scrambling and finding no way out. I could only turn to face my pursuer. Now, perish, traitor! The unicorn declared, galloping towards me. As he did, I could only really just brace myself for what was to come. My only thought was, I fucking hate unicorns! <laughs> That'll do for this post. I'm feeling a little nostalgic, so I'll spend some time re-watching Dragon Ball Z, I suppose. Uh, later on, everyone. So it seems to me that uh, Pete didn't necessarily think this whole plan through, isn't that right? I honestly, what are the odds that the same unicorn would come through the path? Then again, how many unicorns are actually left in the world after the slaughter that we had back in part 20-something? <laughs> it, it is a small chance, probably, I will admit, but sometimes life works that way, you know? You were lucky enough to get them to fall for the plan. Of course the plan's not just going to go off without a hitch. Then what kind of story would we have? <laughs> I hope that Carl and Nick are able to help Pete skirt disaster because... Yeah, this dude, he, he's definitely pissed off after losing every member of the royal family on his watch. So, I guess we'll have to see what happens in the next episode. I hope you like, comment, subscribe, friends. Maybe share the video around if you should like. I would appreciate that. Join us again tomorrow for the continuation. Yes, indeed. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there. Don't play with unicorn fur. This, this ain't a game, all right? <laughs> you open up pathways to worlds that you don't know nothing about. Anyways, <laughs> I appreciate you watching as always. I will see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye. Uh,